another D-Labs basic training where I present simple solutions to common tube amplifier problems. Guest star, of course, is Fred. Let's see what's in the box. So Fred, what do we got today in the magic box? Of course, we got Fank. He's always in here messing around with something and it looks like this time he's got a battery stuck in a brownie. Good place for that. Right, Fink. So today, we have a Fender VibroChamp Blackface amp from the original owner. Complaint, no power output. So as we're going through this repair, I'll give you guys three things to consider. Is it a bad tube? Is it a bad cap? Is it a bad ground connection? Or possibly, is it a weak dilithium crystal? All right, let's check out the amp. Okay, so first off, let's just verify the fault because you never know if possibly he had a bad speaker connection or something was actually loose at the time that he was testing it. I've got the amp on. I hear a lot of static in the volume pot. So I got her about nine. It's full volume. There's a little bit of output, but not much. So, yep, I would agree. No output with the Vibro Champ. So first we'll do a visual inspection as I always do. The big bonus here guys is this is the original owner's amp. It has not been worked on. The only thing that I see that's out of place is the RCA jack for the speaker has been changed with a quarter inch jack, but that's no big deal. All right, so let's zoom in here, take a quick look, and then we'll move on to power checks. Okay, visual inspection. You can see everything top side is stock. Got some 12AX7s, 6V6 output, 5Y3 rectifier, has the original filter cap. This is the right power and output transformer. So everything up there looks great. Bottom side pretty much looks untouched. It's got the old nasty brownie bites, some disc caps in there. These electrolytics have probably seen better days. And of course, you know, I always change. The filter cap but before we do anything we need to verify what's causing this problem so at this point i think it's a good idea to move to some voltage checks let's see what we got on those tubes all right voltage check time we know that everything looks physically correct with the amplifier nobody's been in here butchering around so let's just see if we have some missing voltages causing the loss of amplification we'll start with the 12x7 over here we have our plate voltage. There she is. There's my other plate. This is my cathode voltage. And the other one's here. If you didn't see any cathode voltage, that would mean there's no current conducting through that triode of the 12AX7. That all appears normal. So we'll dance over here to this guy. There's his plate voltage. And we got the cathode voltage. So it appears as though the preamp sections are working. How about the 6V6? We're just going to check the cathode voltage only to see if the bias resistor is doing his thing. And it is. So it appears as though the voltages are present. But if you guys remember on an earlier video I did, I showed rumble in tone controls and the volume pot and this reminds me of that remember when I turned up the volume you heard that big nice crunchy noise here at the top end I suspect what we have going on here is these little brownie bites are leaking DC and killing that signal remember caps are supposed to pass the signal but block DC and these little brownie bites are notorious for being bad so let's go to this side and check we should have our high voltage. We do. I'm going to go to the other side of the point one. Look at there. 16 volts. The 047. 8 volts. So, yep, these guys are leaking DC, and that's what's screwing up the volume and tone controls on this amp. So, what I'm going to do is simply replace these two first. You know, I normally change them all, but I want to show you guys the before and after. Just changing out these two caps bring this amp back to life we're gonna find out okay the brownie bites have been pulled and I've installed orange drops let's check that DC voltage now 
There's my plate. Here's the other side. The orange drafts. Look there, I still have 8 volts on that one. Oh, and I have 18 on this one. Now how can that be? We just put in new caps, assuming these were leaking. But that does not appear to be the issue. I wonder if I, yep, still got the noise in my pot. So let's just monitor one of these voltages. And let's play the volume pot. Look at there. The volume pot is directly affecting the voltage on the output of those tone caps. Let's take a look at the plate voltage. Now a minute ago I had 150 volts. Look, I'm turning down the volume pot. I've got 200. Turn it up and that's nose diving. How can the volume pot be affecting plate voltage? That is very odd. Let's check that pot. I'm wondering if it's defective, maybe shorting out and pulling our plate voltage down and causing this odd DC voltage reaction. Wow, this is a good one. Alright, so I've unplugged the amp. Now we're going to ohm out this volume pot because it seems to be the violator. So I have ground here. And this is a one meg pot. So on this side, we should have a mega ohm. I do not have a mega ohm. Let's turn the volume pot. It appears as though that's wide open. Let's go to the center. Let's see, I can adjust. But then look at there. It goes like way over 2 meg and opens. We have a defective volume pot. You guys are getting twice the action for your money on this one, aren't you? Alright, let me change that pot and let's see if the amp plays. I've swapped out that volume pot with a new CTS 1 meg pot. Let's go back in here and see if that did anything to these DC levels. No. I still have DC present. Let's turn the pot and see if we got noise. Oh yeah. But now we got noise throughout the travel. So that makes me to believe that I overlooked something, guys. Remember how I always talk about the DC on the tone caps? Well, guess what? There is another tone cap. And that's this little mica cap that goes to the treble pot. I've never seen one of these fail yet, but there's always a first. So let's check on this side. Yep, there's our 160 volt plate. What do we got on this side? Uh-huh. 150 volts. Got massive leakage through that cap, and now I suspect that there is current going through the volume pot and it fried it. So, better turn that off and change the cap and see if that fixes it. Alright, third attempt. Now we've changed out the 250 puff cap. Let's bring up the volume control. Look there. Let's check the DC voltage here. Zero zero on all three tone caps. So see there guys, you assume that the main violators were the problem. It turned out to be their little brownie bite brother. First time I've seen one of those treble caps short like that. But the problem's obviously gone. Let's see. Oh yeah. She's playing. And you know the funny thing is, is when I go in and recap an eyelet board, I normally never change that treble cap, so it's probably something to be taken a look at. Let's, for the fun of it, see if we can ohm out that cap. Go to 200K. Shut that amp off. Let's see what we have. Look at there. 22K. It's not a cap anymore. It's a resistor. All right, well, not only did you get some basic training, but I did too. Not to be complacent. I expected just changing those two caps would have done the trick, but I was wrong. <laughs> Great lesson learned. Thank you, Fred. We'll see you guys again.